A wearable that shocks you out of bad habits. Mm, is that the next billion dollar idea or a flop? So today I'm gonna be breaking down a Shark Tank pitch which is thought to be the worst Shark Tank pitch of all time. And I'm gonna try not to laugh during the entire pitch. And after that, I'm gonna break it down. Well, even during that, I'm gonna break it down and we're gonna see where he went wrong and why this idea ended up failing. So, Generation Nation, welcome back to another video. I am super excited to be doing a video like this because I myself have a startup and my goal is to be on Shark Tank one day, pitching in front of all the sharks. And if you guys are interested in that, it's all linked below in my bio. So, what I wanna do is break down this pitch and see where he went wrong and how he could have fixed it and maybe even gotten a deal out of this. So let's get right into it and see why this is considered one of the worst Shark Tank pitches in the history of the show. Next up is a unique way to break bad habits. Right away, he doesn't look like he's very confident. I don't know why he's he's walking out with that facial expression. I see another thing. I know this is completely random to start off the video, but Mr. Wonderful goes like this a lot. If you look it up, it's... Uh, a psychological power move tactic. So I think the reason he does this is because it's it shows that he's in a position of power. People who do this, it's it's thought to be arrogant or obstinate or show that you're in a more powerful position as the other one. So I think that's pretty interesting off off bat. He does it a lot too. My name is Manish Sethi and I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm seeking $500,000 in exchange for 3.14% Five hundred thousand dollars for three point one four percent. I like the pie joke in there. That's interesting. I wonder how they're gonna react to it. But five hundred thousand dollars for three point one four four percent. That's like a what a fifty million dollar valuation. Of my company. <laughs> it's pie wow. day. <laughs> Mark Cuban's about to rip them apart. Sharks. Everybody has bad habits, and for some of us, they're minor, nail biting, hitting the snooze button. But for others, they can be much more serious or even deadly. The one, the one big thing when you give a pitch is you have to be enthusiastic about it because when people make an investment, obviously they're investing in the idea, but even more so than that, they're investing in the person. So you can see right off his demeanor, he's not doing a good job at expressing himself. He doesn't even sound like he's interested in his own product. Meet Pavlok, the first wearable that doesn't just track what you do, but actually changes what you do. His display is pretty cool. Pavlok helps you become aware by alerting you when you do behaviors you'd like to reduce. And simply press the button, and Pavlok releases a mild electric- It looks like a, a Fitbit or a Whoop. I don't think I would wear that over one of them. But let's keep going. Sensation that helps you reduce <laughs> cravings. See, another thing already is you can't show any emotion with this. You can't show any type of emotion when you're making a pitch like this to other people, especially with venture capitalists and investors. Any emotion you show, they'll use it against you. And I think it's going to end up happening here. You can see right away he's discouraged. You can't be discouraged, waver at all, show any type of discomfort, or they're going to rip him apart. Wow. Whether well, sharks. Very serious. I am laughing. It releases a mile. See, and another thing is he, he goes right at them. He goes right back at them. You can tell it's another tactic that they can use. So you see how he goes, you're laughing about it, but it's very serious, and he goes, you're laughing. It's another power tactic he's using. Watch. <laughs> You can laugh, but it's actually something very serious. I am laughing. It See? releases a mild electric sensation that helps you reduce cravings and actually breaks bad habits in the brain. Pavlok harnesses scientific... <laughs> Mark, Mark hates this idea already. ...methods that have been researched for decades. But it's not just research. Since launch, our users have had incredible success in changing their behaviors. Now, Sharks, which of you wants to join us in our mission? That was a short pitch. It wasn't even like a minute long. Across the globe, take control of their own behavior. How did you come up with this idea? I've always had severe cool. ADD. I could never get myself to actually get stuff done. I couldn't get myself to commit to anything, so I did what any normal person would do. I hired someone to sit down next to me and slap me in the face. He was definitely expecting some sort of laugh or reaction out of them from that. That was horrible. That was a horrible joke. I went on Facebook. Nice. <laughs> and I wrote a blog post about it. Seriously? Yeah, it's a cool video. And the blog post went insanely viral. Did they actually slap? Yeah, there's a video of me getting slapped. But by did you get the work done? I wonder how viral it went. Yeah, it was really cool stuff. Because a friend that of mine made you come up with this idea. Yeah, I was visiting a friend of mine. I'm like, dude, why are we? Why am I paying? I could just make a make a zapper that zaps every time I go on Facebook. Can we try it? Can we try it? After one moment, um, I just want to explain kind of the science behind it, and then I'll bring it out. So another thing is with investors. You want to keep science because mine's mine's a tech product. I don't want to compare my stuff to his stuff. 
Uh, but when you're presenting to investors like this, you don't want to go into the science. They want to know the money. How Venture capitalists and private equity, anybody who's investing into a company, especially a startup, they want to know how they can get a return on their investment. They don't care what you're presenting is going to be a viable product to a, a certain target market. So, But you don't want to go too in-depth on the science because it's going to end up shooting themselves in the foot because they're not scientists. And people who go too in-depth on the science and you don't approach it with a business mindset, you end up shooting yourself in the foot, which I think is going to end up happening here again. Pavlov uses a type of science called aversive conditioning. It was very common in the 1960s. See, like, he doesn't even look like he has any idea. It's a slight electric stimulus that's done while doing a undesired bad habit, and it very rapidly trains your reptile brain to associate that uncomfortable stimulus. They don't care. They have, like, he has, he's not listening to anything he's saying, you can tell. Yeah, I'll do it right now. All right. Oh. 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 Turn it back. Turn it down. Ow. Wow. It was a aversive conditioning study that was done in 1980 with 832 subjects. So, I feel like that ruins his credibility a little bit too because it sounds like it's not his specific study here. So wait, so wait. Let's, let's so after five days. You said you, we based our first study on, right? I think he's going to rip him apart for this. Sure. That you did the study, right? Did so I'll you... tell you about a study we did right after, but you can actually look through our evidence pamphlet where we have 21 clinical trials. I bite my nails. I'm trying to not bite my nails all the time. Where it falls down for me oh my gosh, is he hates it. if I have the discipline to buzz myself, do I not have the discipline to stop? People have, okay. People, do you have the discipline to stop? Well, I don't. Do you wish you could stop? What percentage of time does it not work? Uh, it doesn't work if you don't want it to work. So, so like, what kind of response is that? He's he, You can tell right away, he just mentally checked out. As soon as he said that, Mark Cuban completely mentally checked out from everything he was saying. From now on, I feel like any credibility that he could have established is completely out of the window here. Oh, wow. <laughs> See? So if you use it on sugar, after about three or four days... I'll because it's like a going back to the power the power move that Mr. Wonderful did. They all try and establish some sort of power to show that they're not necessarily better, but they have a financial foothold over top of everybody else. And they do. I mean, that's how it is. And uh, they want... It's also a show. So they have to put on this act and show their personality and their... Uh, financial twist, but at the same time, they want to figure out how the product's going to fit into the market. Because if the, the product doesn't have a good market fit, there's no reason for an investment. And that's what I think Mark Cuban's kind of connecting here, and he's completely mentally checked out. Flavor changes. Now, what's interesting about it, in the you first- start to notice the flavor changes. Yeah, you you're such- See, there's another example of him showing emotion and losing credibility even further and further. So now Mark Cuban's just going to go into making fun of him, I think, from now on. I think he's completely mentally checked out, like I said earlier. You really can't go in showing emotion. This is a, it's a business transaction. Obviously, it's a TV show, but you can't go in having any emotion like he is now. A, a con artist. I'm absolutely not. Ooh. As for results, Mark, more than 50% of our users break their habit oh, in five days, seven days or less. First, let's well, leave, let's leave, all, let, okay, let's let's leave just, the skeptics no, 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 for no, no, one no, no, minute. No, no, no. I, I just want to get you guys can argue to the cast on. You want to get a deal? Explain to me why you're worth $14 million. Fifteen. Here's a $15 million valuation. Fifteen. What is it? How much? Number one. Number one, our sales are great. What are your sales? your sales? Here's your name. He didn't even talk about his sales. And we actually just began shipping this week. We've sold $800,000 of revenue. Wait, wait. Pre-orders. Three-fourths of the users were pre-orders and one-fourth of the users were prototypes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Pre-orders. What did each of those people pay for one device? $200. How much? $200. <laughs> Holy crap. Who buys these? So our biggest users are sitting too long. Leave a comment down below. Would you buy this? Nail biting and eating. So we've started to build out multiple really cool integrations for this product. The first thing is the alarm clock. It's the first alarm clock that works. You get when you get a slight zap in the morning. I can I can see that. I can see that working with people who are really heavy sleepers. But other than that, yeah. the people love it. How can you guys be so gullible? Read the evidence. We're not being gullible. It's none of it's your we're evidence. Asking it's, no one's disputing aversion therapy. Yeah, so we're that's a big part of the study. That's why me personally, we're trying to do our own study, research study, because this is another example of him losing his credibility because he's basing all of his results off of other people's work for his product. So technically, there's no validation or proof of concept of his product based on his own study, based on his own results. This is all based off of other people's results that they've got from different studies. So this is another example of Mark Cuban tearing him down for his credibility and especially him showing emotion is where it all started to go downhill but now it's just him having this domino effect of just tearing down his product and his idea because he just first of all doesn't like him as a person which goes back to the very first thing i said is people invest in people before they invest in the product
Oh my god. Yeah, so he just he, any any chance of a deal that he had, he just completely ruined it right there. Wow, that, that's horrible. He literally just goes, you guys are making me so ADD. Oh man, they're about to all turn on him now because it was just him against Mark Cuban. They were all kind of seemed like they were a little bit on his side, but when you show too much emotion, especially against somebody else, he's toast. Make you ADD. You guys make it happen. Right. Denise, you're a strange dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of the cool stuff we're doing that Mr. Cuban would like is this. We've, uh, I don't think Mark's gonna like anything. Yeah. Version therapy is legit, but what's not legit is trying to take credit for other studies and apply it to your product. Okay. Kidding, I gave you that it's booklet with he goes deeper into the hole showing too much emotion and he has his hands in his pockets That's a horrible display of etiquette. I know it sounds really dumb But that's something that even the finest of details that venture capitalists look at Patience, sir you got a book that has none, none of those studies, studies are yours. No, They're no, just no, related no. These to are studies. We, 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 these are our version therapy studies. Version therapy studies. So, okay. Outside uh, your realm, well, you not know necessarily. What? That's, a, that's the, the strongest point here. Mark. Is that this isn't based on anything that you've done. Right. Yep. Are you yeah. so yeah. Where, okay, so we have had. Where are your studies? studies? That's why it's hard in tech. It ruins credibility. Five, five days, oh, wait, seven days or less. But you don't have any proof that it changes your case. We do. We have users. We have evidence. More than half of our users quit now. More than 81% of our users quit now. Where now. is your proof of this? What study do you have? You should be doing clinical trials, sure, I'd love right? To. Clinical trial? Personally, I don't think he needs a clinical trial for this. I think you can do studies without it being a clinical trial. You can do research studies from government grants. So there's something called an SBIR, a small business innovation research. So the different government agencies called like the DOD, the Department of Defense, the National Science Foundation, and National Institute of Health. They're given billions and billions of dollars by the government each year and they give out these grants to people to do clinical trials where he could get a grant for like $300,000 and all he has to do is prove that his research does something to better the individual who uses it. So there's specific research grants that you can get, and you could get something like that. I guess that could be not a clinical trial, but it would be tough to validate this. Why don't you have clinical trials? All right, I'm gonna make it simple. I talk about things, I say things are either heroes or zeros. For me, this is a nowhere Nero. I'm <laughs> up. Yeah, they're all they're all really turning against them now. I find your presentation is exhausting and complicated and i want to let it be known that i personally i think this is a cool idea and i think so far if he presented it in a way that was more personable and he was more open-minded to listen to what they had to say because they're there to rip down the idea and they want to break you down to make sure that you know what you're talking about and that it's a good market fit again because at the end of the day all they want to do is get a return on their investment again i think this is a cool idea it's just the way he's going about presenting the information is not the best way of doing it and I couldn't imagine having the energy to deal with this that. This doesn't sound very positive, Barbara. I'm out. Oh, okay, yeah. Laurie Barbara history. I'd like to talk a little bit about our right numbers here. this let, year. Let, let, let me just finish. Oh, sure. When you first came out, I really liked it. It's habit. Habit creates discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline creates more habit. And that's how you get success. What I don't like about it is you have a $16 million valuation. Yeah, that makes no sense. On pre-orders, it's too much. So, I understand absolutely. If you put around a $4 million valuation or $6 million, maybe, especially on pre-orders, like five. All your aversion therapy can be well executed with your device. You wouldn't need to import other people's studies. Because See, personally, I don't 100% agree with that because some devices they can use a clinical pathway uh, to get approval called a 510k and when you get the 510k it means you're using other people's tech in your product and then use a market differentiation to sell so i think why he keeps doing this like confused looking face like that is he has similar technology in a sense but then the way he goes about it when he puts it in the market is different with all this advanced money you got you could have gone to any university and said you know what we don't want to rush it we want to get our own verifiable studies in place so that no one can question us. The one thing that kills tech products is hyperbole, because at some point you have to execute. You so violated that. Speak, listen to me. Now your turn to listen. If you were to just said, you know what, this is a reminder, and everybody is different, so we have different ways to Man. remind you, right? But you went so over the top with nonsense, it is everything but a legitimate product. You're a combination of spontaneous combustion and ADD mixed together. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's very difficult to listen to you. Yeah. Luckily for you, yeah, see, this is where it comes back to where, again, they invest in the people before they invest in the product. So you can tell right off the bat when he's coming in, right off his presentation, he's not personal in the presentation, they don't like him. And that's a really bad sign when you go into a meeting like this, even if it is a TV show. To make money, I worked on a Rhesus study that used the same technology. How many other degrees, right? And I'm telling you the truth here, so I'm interested, okay? I believe this technology works because I've seen it work. Your valuation is crazy. Okay. It's really high. I'm sorry. 
it's not worth 15.9 million now. Another thing too is when you go in, you have to be very open-minded because these people are all successful. And it's hard because if it's something is your idea, it's hard to take open criticism from other individuals and be able to learn off of that. But the best entrepreneurs, first of all, they're able to stand their ground when they know they're in the right. But for the vast majority, the people who are the best CEOs, founders, are the ones that are able to adapt adjust, be open to criticism, and listen to other people who are smarter. Because if you're always the smartest person in the room or in a company, if you can do everything in the company, you think you can do everything in the company, what's the point of having everybody else coming in and working for you? Like if you think that you're the best electrical engineer and you bring in an electrical engineer, what's the point of having the other person there if you think you're better than them? And you're not an electrical engineer in the sense of getting that degree. His approach, at this is he came into the, the meeting thinking he was the smartest person in the room and he was gonna run it without taking any form of criticism with, from any of these sharks. And that's just not the way that these type of meetings are gonna go. Solve the problem in the infrastructure very creatively. I'll give you the $500,000 of debt on the company, okay? You're gonna give me the 3.14% as equity today. And you're gonna walk out of here with a shark tank deal. I'm gonna put that's it on for 24 deal. months at seven and a half percent and balloon and be back in two years. If one third of your projections are right, you can easily do that. It's an offer. It's an offer. That is yeah. Um, that's not a good deal, yeah. though. Honestly, there's a problem. That's not. That's not horrible, I guess. So the problem, Mr. Wonderful, is that it's, we're not focused on the money. We're focused more on the we're habits. Focused on the money. You've come you're to the wrong place, my friend. I'm here to make money. Let him finish, Kev. Our biggest thing, our biggest goal, is to break bad habits around the world. And Mr. Wonderful, like I just, I. I can't work with him. Why not? I'm just worried that if he we work together. You don't like him. I do like him as a person, but I feel like as an I investor, do like him as a person. Really bad. Manish, you didn't Who want an offer that? here today, I did you really? I absolutely want an offer. I you just you got one, and why don't you want the structure of that offer? It's the, the structure is actually quite good. Uh, What's the person? It's the person. I feel like. He just said he liked him. I would take an offer from anybody besides Mr. Wonderful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, why would you ever say that? Oh, why would you say that? Oh my gosh, did they pay this guy to be on this show? That's the worst thing I've ever heard. Manish? He's gonna kick him out. You're a d Get the out of here. Oh! Um, okay, well, if you, are you all out? Yeah. <laughs> So I think where he went wrong is he let his emotions get the best of him and he wasn't in the meeting with an open mind. So when you go into these kind of meetings, you have to be able to listen to others, take constructive criticism. It's all about growing as an entrepreneur and growing as a person. You have to be able to take criticism in and turn it into something positive for the business and potentially something positive for yourself as well. Because if you're gonna work with people and have a business entity and be able to sell things, sell products, you have to be able to work with people and create an, an open environment and be able to work with other individuals to get done what you need to get done as a business. And as a founder and CEO, you need to be able to work with other people who are going to help you expand your business and grow. And I think that's where he went wrong today because he tried to go in, pretty much demanded everything he wanted without having any input from them. And the setting, you're not going to be able to get that out of them. You need to, you need to go in, express your product, express yourself as a person, as a personality, and show to them that you will put everything on the line for this product and do everything you can to make it successful. So again, that goes back to they invest in the people before they invest in the product. Now, let's see how Pavlock's doing today. So he's selling it for $150. It's a little bit expensive, I guess, but if it's getting the job done. Wow, so it has 1,683 ratings at a four star. So I guess it's not doing too bad. Let's say there's 1,683 ratings and this is like 5% of people who bought one left to rate. So, so let's say he sells 17,000. So that's 2.55 million in sales. It's around $765,000 in profit. So honestly, it doesn't really seem like he's doing that bad. Now leave a comment down below what you think of the Pavlock and if there's any other Shark Tank product that you think I should review and break down next. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, turn on post notifications, do whatever you guys have to do to stay updated with the channel because as you guys know, we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. And if you guys are interested in more entrepreneurship, finance, crypto, and anything that has to do with the world of money, Make sure to join my Discord link in my bio linked in this video and pretty much all over my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.